Let's talk about cheat codes, why you should add them to your project, and how to implement them. There's the obvious answer that cheat codes can be a fun Easter egg for your players to find and discover. In my first game, I placed cheat codes in the wallpapers that players could earn by collecting cards on Steam, and I'm not sure anybody found them, but I thought it was a fun idea. But that wasn't the reason I first put cheat codes into my game. The idea came as a suggestion of a Twitch viewer as a way to help with testing and debugging. In my game, like so many others, you had to collect resources, and those resources were then used to create things like buildings or catapults. If I wanted to test my code, maybe make sure the code for placing a building was working, I'd have to start the game, create a bunch of workers, and wait for them to collect the resources, and then after all that, I could test the placement of the building. Now this didn't take much more than 5 minutes, but when you need to do it 5, 6, or maybe 10 times in a row, you end up wasting a lot of time. And that's where cheat codes come in. With a few keystrokes, I could instantly have as much of any resource as I needed. This changed a 5 minute testing cycle into a 30 second testing cycle, which is huge. And I'm willing to bet that your project can benefit from cheat codes too. Adding cheat codes is surprisingly easy, or at least the number of lines of code is pretty reasonable. We're talking 75-ish lines of code total. After that, all the cheat codes can be added just using the inspector. Now a big piece of this ease of implementation will come from using Unity events. If you're unfamiliar with Unity events, these are the same things that are in the inspector of a button component under the on-click option. You can drop in an object, and then in the case of a button, call a public function on that object when the button is pressed. They can be really helpful, and we're going to make use of them in our own custom class. The custom class in this case has a string for the cheat code and a Unity event that will get called when the cheat code is correctly entered. Notice that I've made the class serializable so that it will show in the inspector when added as a type to another class. Also note that the class is not a mono behavior as we won't be adding this to a game object directly but rather we'll be creating a list of instances of this class. After the class is set up, we need to create a second class for the cheat code manager along with a few other variables. All the variables are private, but once again, I've serialized them so they can be seen in the inspector. This will help with debugging, and in the case of the list, it will help with the creation and assignment of the cheat codes themselves. Now the first variable is a simple boolean that will track whether the player is typing. The value of the variable is toggled by pressing enter or return. This is how the player or developer will signal that they are entering or finish entering a cheat code. The string variable will simply track the characters that have been typed. This will then be used to compare against cheat codes in the list to determine if the correct code has been entered. And lastly, there's the list. This is a list of cheat code instances that has the strings for the codes themselves and the related Unity event that will be called if the code is correctly entered. Then up next is the core of the implementation, which is all sitting in an update function. Our first step is to check if the enter or return key has been pressed. If this was done while or after the player was typing, then that indicates that the cheat code is complete and we need to check if it's correct. This is done with the check cheat function, which we'll get into in just a bit. Next, we toggle the value of the player typing boolean to the opposite of its current value. And then moving on down the code, if the player is typing, we need to process the characters that they've been typing. To do this, we can use a for each loop that will loop through all the characters typed during a given frame. Now, thankfully, Unity provides an easy way to track all those characters with the value input.inputString. The first thing we need to check is if the backspace key has been pressed. If it was and the current string is longer than zero characters, we're going to remove the last character in the string. This is done with a substring function, which essentially creates a smaller string out of our current string, i.e. a substring. We have to give the function a starting index, which in this case is the zeroth character, and an ending index, in this case, the length of the string minus one, so that we remove just the last character. The next if statement checks whether the enter or return key was pressed. If this happened, we'll then reset the string back to an empty string so that it's ready to record the next cheat code. Now you might be thinking that it makes more sense to put this further up in the update function when we were already checking whether the return button had been pressed. But there's a subtle and important reason not to do that. The return and enter keys are also recorded as characters with input.inputString, and we don't want those recorded in our current string as it will mess up the cheat code. So this conditional is also used as a way to filter out those particular characters. And lastly, the final conditional is going to add the character to the current string so we keep it updated 
and we'll be able to compare it to our cheat code in our list of cheat code instances. The last chunk of code is the check cheat function. This function is pretty straightforward. It takes in a string parameter, then loops through all the cheat code instances in the cheat code list, and checks if the input string matches the cheat code string. If it does, the event on the cheat code instance is invoked and we return a true value. Otherwise, if the loop finishes without finding a match, a value of false is returned and no event is called. As a side note, the Boolean return value for the function is totally optional, but could serve a purpose in some projects or applications and doesn't cost anything to implement. With that done, we can head back to Unity, add our cheat code manager to a scene object, add a cheat code and a corresponding event to our list of cheat code instances, and then we can test it out by entering play mode, pressing enter, typing our cheat code and pressing enter again, and sure enough, it works. Almost like I wouldn't show it to you if it didn't. Anyways, there you go. There's a quick and dirty way of implementing cheat codes into your game. Hopefully that was interesting and better yet, useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game designing. Under the unclock. Unclock. Yeah.